Welcome to CSE Guru. The next topic we will discuss in dynamic programming is Warshall's algorithm. Warshall's algorithm is used to find the existence of path between all pair of vertices in a given weighted connected graph. For example, if you are considering this as the given graph, it will find the existence of path between all pair of vertices. That is, considering the vertex from A, A to B, whether there is a path or not, A to C and A to D. Similarly, consider the next vertex, B, from B to A, B to C, B to D. Similarly, from C, C to A, C to B, C to D. Similarly, D to A, D to B and D to C. That is, considering from each vertex whether there is an existence of path between all other vertices in this given graph. So, this is nothing but Warshall's algorithm. For each pair of vertices, it will find whether there is an existence of path or not. This Warshall's algorithm is applicable to both directed and undirected graph. So, directed graph is nothing but graph pointing with arrow. Graph with the direction that is from A to B there is a path and B to A there is no path. Likewise, we need to consider. So, it is applicable to both directed and undirected weighted graph. This Warshall's algorithm is used to determine transitive closure of a directed graph or all paths in a directed graph using adjacency matrix. So, this transitive closure is nothing but path matrix. It will find the existence of path between every pair of vertices in the given graph. That is nothing but the transitive closure. And this transitive closure we can able to find with the help of DFS or BFS. That is depth first search algorithm or breadth first search algorithm. So, to implement Warshall's algorithm, we need to find the transitive closure. And the applications of Warshall's algorithm, if you are considering, it is used to find the data flow and control flow dependencies, redundancy checking, inheritance testing in object-oriented software. So, next we will discuss how to find the transitive closure to implement Warshall's algorithm. The transitive closure of a directed graph with n vertices can be defined as n into n Boolean matrix. That is t is equal to set tij in which element in the ith row and j column will be represented as 1. If there exists a non-trivial path from ith vertex to jth vertex. Otherwise, tij will be represented as 0. That is, there is no non-trivial path. For example, consider this graph and its adjacency matrix A is equal to this ith row and jth column is represented as 1. That is, from 8th row and 8th column, this position will be represented as 1. If there exists a non-trivial path from ith vertex to jth vertex. If there is a path from A to A, then this position will be represented as 1. Otherwise, this position will be represented as 0. So, now we will find the adjacency matrix for this given graph. So, A to B, there is a path. So, A to B, we can represent it as 1 because there is a non-trivial path. Then there is no direct path to any other vertices. So, the remaining positions in A will be represented as 0. That is, A to A, there is no direct path. A to C, there is no direct path. And A to D, there is no direct path. So, from B, if you are considering, from B to D, there is a path. There is only one path. So, B to D, there is a path. So, we can represent it as 1. The remaining positions, we can represent it as 0. Similarly, from C, if you are considering, there is no existence of path from C to A, B or D. So, C row will be represented as 0 for all positions. And D, if you are considering, there is an existence of path from D to A. We need to consider this arrow, direction. D to C, there is a path. So, D to A, there is a path, we can represent it as 1. 
and d to c there is a path we can represent it as 1 and d to b there is no path d to d there is no path so likewise we need to find the adjacency matrix so this adjacency matrix we will represent the position as 1 if there is a non trivial path from i th row to j th column otherwise we have to represent it as 0 so this is nothing but the adjacency matrix so now how we will find the transitive closure so transitive closure we can able to find in this way so the logic we need to consider here is consider this vertex a a to b there is a path and a to d there is a sorry a to b there is a path and b to d there is a path and a to d there is a path so if you are considering here there is no direct path from a to d there is no direct path but there is an existence of path from a to d through the vertex b so in this case we can represent a to d also we can represent it as 1 so in this way we are going to find the transitive closure so now we will check it so first we will consider vertex a so a to b there is a path we can represent it as 1 a to d if you are considering there is no direct path but there is a path through b that is a to b there is a path and then from b to d so we can represent a to d there is a path so we can represent it as 1 similarly from a to c if you are considering there is no direct path but there is an existence of path through a to b b to d and d to c so a to c also there is a path so we can represent it as 1 and a to a if you are considering there is a path from a to b b to d and d to a so there is a path from a to a also similarly if you are considering the vertex b b to d there is a path that is a direct path so we can represent it as 1 and b to a if you are considering there is no direct path from b to a but there is an existence of path from b to d d to a so there is a path from b to a so b to a we can represent it as 1 next b to c if you are considering through d there is a path but there is no direct path from b to c so b to d d to c there is a path so we can represent b to c also there is a path and b to b if you are considering b to d d to a and a to b there is a path so b to b also there is a path next if you are considering vertex c there is no direct path from c vertex c to a also there is no path c to b also there is no path c to d also there is no path so we can able to represent zero all positions are zero only next if you are considering d d to a there is a path so we can represent it as 1 d to b there is no direct path but through a there is a path so we can represent d to b also 1 d to c there is a direct path and d to d if you are considering through a and b there is a path so d to d also there is a path we can represent it as 1 so this is nothing but the transitive closure for this given graph. So, the transitive closure logic is nothing but if there is no direct path from A to D in the sense, but there is a direct path through B in the sense, we can consider there is an existence of path from A to D and we can represent the matrix position as 1. So, this logic we need to consider and implement for this given graph. Then we will get the transitive closure for this given graph. And this transitive closure will find the existence of path between all pair of vertices in the given graph. That is A to A there is a path, A to B there is a path, A to C there is a path, A to D there is a path. Likewise B to A, B to B, B to C, B to D and from D row also. So this is nothing but the transitive closure. And we can able to implement the Warshall's algorithm with the help of the transitive closure. And Warshall's algorithm is used to find the 
existence of path between all power of vertices in the even graph. So, in this session, we have discussed the logic of transitive closure to implement Warshall's algorithm. In the next session, we are going to discuss how to find this transitive closure step by step using Warshall's algorithm. Thank you for watching this video.